Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I, I got an early start with uh, the hip. Uh, uh, you know, I got a little bit born into this life. Uh, my father did a bit of uh, hip surgery himself, so I have to credit uh, him as well. But uh, yeah, I spent time with Joel, and I'm uh, thrilled to have him in the booth today as I'm giving a talk about my experiences as it relates to hip surgery. But I think one of the best tools that we've got in, uh, in surgery around the hip is, uh, is the orthopedic table. And, and for me, that's why I'm, uh, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Is uh, the, the audio is OK? I saw a couple of people making sure everybody can hear back here. It looks like everybody's comfortable with this. OK. So there are some uh, disclaimers. These are my personal views, maybe not necessarily the views of uh, OSI and Mizuho. Um, so we'll move on. So um, HANA it is now, I believe, the gold standard. So this is the table if you're going to be doing hip surgeries, whether you're, be do you're going to be doing an intertrochanteric femur fracture in your hospital, you're going to be doing even a posterior wall acetabular fracture in your hospital, or you're going to be in your surgery center doing an anterior hip, or you're going to be doing an arthroscopy in your surgery center. Um, it's the first surgical table that was optimized for the anterior hip. Um, it's largely unchanged from its original design, which I actually think is a good thing because now we have almost generations of nurses out there that have been trained on this table. Um, we um, have uh, uh, fellows that have uh, used the HANA table all throughout their training, so they're very comfortable with it by the time they're getting to their fellowship. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's ubiquitous in our, in our uh, uh, orthopedic life. It's been used in thousands of bioskills uh, labs, whether it's J&J, Zimmer, uh, Stryker, so you know, most people who are out there doing anterior approach are going to be comfortable with it or ha have used it, and it's now available in a majority of hospitals nationwide. The elephant in the room is that commonly the biggest concern I have, both uh, in the stateside as well as internationally, is is this table is expensive. So that's that's their biggest concern is, is that they're they're worried about the expense of the table. And there's this perception that it actually is going to be this big expense. And when you look at um, from various perspectives, uh, we've actually shown that it actually reduces costs. So whether you're involved in bundled payments and you're looking at the economics of hip replacement um, by virtue of use of using an anterior approach, um, or whether you're using um, metrics such as the uh, use of staff in your OR, you can find m many cases all the way across the board that prove that this is actually a way of saving money. But to go through this intellectual exercise with you guys, um, the most expensive tool in my ASC, this is a fill in the blank question. I want you guys to tell me, what is the most expensive? You, got, you guys got a bunch of choices here. What is the most expensive tool in my, in my ASC? Is it the HANA table? Is it the C-arm? Is it my navigation software system? Or is it my automatic impaction system? Those out there that say it's uh, A, raise your hand. Well, OK. Uh, answer is none. It's my PA, <laughs> Carrie. And if she's in my OR and she's holding hook, I am not using her to the level of her training. Her training is in diagnosis and management of musculoskeletal disease. It is not there simply to be holding a retractor. So the basic setup, if you're not going to use a HANA table and you're going to use a standard OR, you're typically going to have you know, your anesthesiologist at the top, your circulator at the bottom of the table. On one side, you'll have a surgical assistant who's going to hold retractor for you. You're going to have yourself as the surgeon here at the bottom, and you're probably going to have somebody there to help hold the leg. Okay? You can eliminate that person holding a leg by going very easily to a, the orthopedic table. That actually, that person holding a leg now becomes the table. So you've, you've helped some of your costs right there in your ASC. You don't have to have somebody holding the table, a second assist. That second assist comes at you know $60,000 a year plus benefits. You do that over four or five years, you've easily paid for your table. But with the advent of additional assisted devices, such as uh, uh, you know, retractors, self-retaining retractor systems, you can actually eliminate the person across the table. 
So now this person's gone. So now this is my current OR configuration. I have an anesthesiologist, I have a circulating nurse, and I have myself, and I have a, somebody to handle the instruments. But that's it, nobody else touching the, the patient. The first time I saw this was actually with this guy, Fred Lowe. This was in 2008. He, by necessity, um, they basically pay for their entire, you know, all their staff. Gaston, is his, uh, his uh, staff member, called in sick, and he basically was forced to run through a day of eight cases in his surgery center. He has this mechanical arm that serves as a self-retaining retractor, and with the self-retaining retractor coupled with the, you know, in this case, a, 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 an orthopedic table, he was able to get through that. So I said, well, I've already got this orthopedic table. I've got something that can do all of that. So in 2014, I started doing this on my own using, in, in this case, it was the TDAN Industries uh, self-retaining retractor system. But with a so good self-retaining retractor system and the use of the HANA table, you, you too can actually do this. So it's, it's a very easy workflow once you've got it figured out. So the key features, I think still the most important thing about the HANA table is this. Brilliant idea, which was to lift the femur from inside the wound. That's an, a beautiful um, uh, way of doing it because it, it reduces the amount of soft tissue dissection required. It allows the soft tissues of the hip to fall posteriorly, which allows excellent exposure. And by virtue of that, it allows more of your patients that you would do um, in other facilities to come to your ASC. I mean, we, we will still do in our ASC patients with BMIs in their 40s. And that patient population, if you were trying to do this on a standard table with some foam, blo foam blocks and a padded mail, I, I will argue that that would be a much more difficult case and a, create a lot more surgeon anxiety about its reliability of being able to perform, be performed in the ASC environment. The other tables out there that don't use the hook typically rely on the bump, but the bump has been around for eons now. I mean, that the bump, by virtue of the bump, I'm going towards this, um, it's, you can see this on the original Jude table as a lifter for the femur. It's this leg pad that you see uh, adjacent to the, uh, the spar. That's, that's dropped down, and that's used to lift the whole femur. But the problem with that is it pushes those soft, soft tissues anteriorly, so it doesn't give you an effective uh, way of elevating the femur separate from the soft tissues. You can see this on some of the other extensions that are table extensions. They rely upon a bump behind the thigh. Another benefit of the, the HANA table is it's fully compatible with it's carbon fiber with, with fluoroscopically guided navigation or even non-fluoroscopically guided navigation. It's basically optimized for using x-ray to guide implant placement. But if you choose not to use x-ray, say you like computer navigation or, or something else, this table is compatible with whatever system you, d you elect to use. And the great thing about that is if you're in an ASC, you're trying to recruit more of these cases to your ASC, you don't have to get a special table for that one surgeon who wants to use his, um, his special navigation system. You can say, well, we've got a table that will be compatible across the board. And with this one table, um, you know, this table provides me ability to do almost all of my cases. I mean, we do anterior approach hip, we do certain acetabular fracture patterns, hip arthroscopy, femoral neck fractures, hardware removals around the hip. I typically do my PAO now on the HANA table and I will take my screws out in my ASC, both on the HANA table. We do femoral osteotomies and femoral nailing. If you're on an emergency case and you're by yourself in the middle of the night, I, I feel comfortable if they've, got a, uh, if they've got a HANA table. I know I can, you, by virtue of the setup, get reduction. And we saw those wonderful tri uh, tips, uh, was it yesterday? It was yesterday in our other lecture. So these things are, are great things to have in your back pocket, help and really assist and facilitate um, the procedure and minimize the reliance on staff to get these things done. So in arthroscopy, the, the HANA table has advantages. Specifically, you know, you're using the same supine approach as your anterior approach hip. So typically, my draping is pretty much the same. So I have one standardized draping system that I use for all of my, my cases. My 
my staff is very comfortable with it. They say, oh, it's Dr. Mass. We're going to pull these things for his, his uh, draping. So now they don't have to worry about, oh, well, is he going to go, you know, is he going to use this setup or what that setup? It's always the same. It standardizes that. The boots allow for reliable application of traction um, without tissue trauma and reduce, it reduces foot numbness. The, the newer generation um, boots have been much more uh, advanced over prior generations. We're finding much less uh, concerns related to foot numbness or problems with the boots afterwards. And we have um, uh, generous perineal pads for the hip arthroscopist. So if you're out there shopping for your ASC, I bet you've already seen the alternatives out there. I mean, you've kind of been around, you kind of know what's out there. I mean, you've, you can try to do it on the standard table and you can buy a bunch of foam and you can do all sorts of things and, and you will make some of your surgeons happy. But if you want to grow beyond your few surgeons that are doing it off of the table, you will probably need some sort of either extension or table. So you can say, well, we don't want to spend anything. We'll see if the implant manufacturer can bring one of these things in. And these things have about the stability of this picnic table that you see here. I mean, these things are thin. They're t typically made of metal. They're not optimized for fluoro. Yes, you can get by with eating a dinner on here, but you're not going to want to have every meal that you do at that table. Over time, you'll want something different. There is one table out here whose uh, unique sales proposition is how well it fits into a in a cabinet in your, uh, in your ASE. Well, I'll tell you, if, you're, if your major sales proposition is how well it can be stored, then it's probably not very good for your business. So I would tell you, you probably aren't, shouldn't be picking that one. There's another one that, uh, that argues that it can do everything. I mean, it's a shoulder table, it's a, uh, an elbow table, it's a hip table, but you start to get so unwieldy with the functions of the table that it becomes self-defeating as well. So the advantages in the ASC, the real advantages I've seen is that in 2021, we are dealing with staffing problems. I don't know how many of you have your own ASC, but it is hard right now getting and retaining good staff. We are dealing with travelers commonly. We are dealing with people that may be only with us for two or three months. The beauty is they have probably experienced this table somewhere else. So they come in, they are already trained. They are ready to roll with it. Um, there's a minimal learning curve here for the new staff. Most of the staff that are coming in that are working at our new surgery center, they already know how to use the HANA table. Um, so new surgeons feel much more comfortable with what they've trained on or, or what they're using currently. And what's great is mechanical failures do happen with tables. But with the HANA table, we, ha we know we have a HANA table across our parking lot at our hospital. We have one in about four uh, miles down in another hospital, if we ended up with a broken part, we know we have redundancy. If you're with another extension or other table manufacturer, you may find that it's weeks or, heaven forbid, months before you get your part because of shipping concerns related to COVID and other, other things. So I'll tell you, the HANA table for me is the gold standard. It's what, what you should be considering if you're out there in the market for a table. And um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm honored that they would have selected me to talk about it, but I'm actually, I believe in this table. I think it's the right thing for uh, the future hip surgery. So with that being said, um, I'm going to show you a little video about, you know, how the, the, uh, the table works in our own ASC. This is our ASC. This is a videotape of uh, a, a day, out, day in the life of MAST. our typical draping setup here. You see this is just myself and my scrub tech setting up our drape. He comes in a little early, sets up that back table. You can see we're very streamlined just using those two tables. With some advent of some commercially available drapes, this uh, draping time has been dropped dramatically. So we're not typically using an OR scrub assist, aside from my scrub tech who's managing the equipment. We're putting on, this is our self-retaining retractor system we're current, currently utilizing. 
I'm setting it up myself. He's going to go drape the C-arm. And so this is how it works. We basically are, we're doing our approach. The retractors go in. They're locked to the uh, self-retaining retractor system. And we go hands-free. And through the procedure, the various steps of the procedure, we're actuating the self-retaining retractor system with one finger. I do a dislocation first technique if you're wondering what's going on here. Not many people do that, but uh, I learned that from one of the best. The setup's minimalist, so uh, this is our back table. Of course, the procedure, we're selecting a reamer. We don't have a reamer pan. We size it and open up our peel-packed reamers for what we need. Typically, just one reamer. We've got improved ergonomics related to the uh, fact that, you know, you don't have somebody in there reaching, having to work around a C-arm. I'm checking x-ray. I leave the, you know, the uh, retractors in place. And using some of the facilitating technologies, we're getting really good accuracy with less fatigue. At the end of the day, I'm using some of these facilitating technologies, which take the, the load off my shoulder. Typically, we're able to reduce the number of brooches we're using down to two or three, going to the final implant. And at the end of the day, it's all about surgeon satisfaction. I can get through my workload. I can do it with the same level of accuracy and precision that I do in, the, in my hospital or whatever side of care I like to use. And uh, we can be very happy with our results.